and we are live. Hello and welcome to Developer Insights. I'm David. And I'm Justin. Together we are the leads on game development and design here at Codename. Not only that, but we're also the founders of Codename. And we will be your hosts for this episode and for every episode. Unless we're not. So far that is 100% the case. Today is our 18th episode. And hopefully not our last episode. Well, why would it be our last episode? Well, we might hit the episode ban wall. I hear that's a thing. Is the episode ban wall really this low? It's not like 1,500 episodes or something like that? That doesn't really seem like something I would know. OK, well, let's up it just to be safe. Seems reasonable to me. <laughs> we are here to answer your development and design questions about Idle Champions. Uh, if you ask us about other things or some of our other games, we might be able to answer those too. And of course, if you don't ask any questions, you may have to suffer through Justin's one-man reenactment of what, last week's episode. Well, we didn't have an episode last week. Mm, well, I guess your job is done. Great. Uh, I see that we are already starting to get lots of questions. I wonder what they're about. And as always, we've pulled some previous que or questions from the previous show uh, that we didn't get to last time. So we'll start answering some of those and uh, wait while the new ones come in. Um, additionally to that, I do have some updates from the dev team because uh, we've been continuing to get bug fixes in, especially around the Modron stuff, because I know uh, that's something that everyone is excited to see worked on. Um, so we'll get to that. Um, unless, Justin, you want to start with these two leftover tech questions, or uh, questions um, we flagged to be looked at. Yeah, so we flagged a couple of things last week to get looked at, and a couple of them have been looked at, so we wanted to provide some updates on those. Um, so uh, one player asked if um, we assigned the skins showing in trials as a task to any poor developer. <laughs> um, so that would be um, your little champion in the trials screen having a skin if you have one assigned to them. Um, and I believe we are we have not yet assigned that to someone, but we are going to assign that to someone. And we have someone in mind. So I mean, I let Jacob know it was coming this way. All right. So, so it has been quasi assigned. <laughs> Um, and then uh, HighLord65 and many other people asked last week, uh, or two weeks ago, I guess, um, about uh, the uh, bug in the Steam build where leveling up heroes by holding the mouse button um, was going very, very slow. It was indeed a bug, and it has been, I'm not sure if it's been fixed in the live version. I think it has. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think yeah, it's I fixed in 404. Yeah. yeah. So that's all fixed. Cool. And then some updates on the Modron fixes that are going on, uh, specifically from the desk of Mark Babis, who's this guy working on it. Um, so this is a long-standing one, and that is the, the random. <laughs> it's listed here as placing a random familiar. If you place, what is written there? You know what? I'm not. I'm gonna go with what he said. I'm just gonna paraphrase it. Uh, so. Um, if you have a familiar set, if you had a set of familiar saved and the Modron goes to load that familiar, if the familiar is not the specific fam familiar previously, it had just left that spot blank. Um, as of now, it will attempt to put the specific one in. And if it doesn't have one, uh, the specific one you've asked for, it will just put a random one in there. So no familiar slot will be left uh, blank if you have enough familiars. And when I say as of now, I mean as of the build that they are in the process of making and putting up, which will be on Steam. Uh, before the end of the day, unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong with that. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, jinxing the you whole thing. Attempted fate. I yeah. know. Um, <laughs> additionally, there were issues around uh, available champions when you were loading a formation. Uh, and addition, and in, in connection to that, there was an issue with champions being recalled. Um, so if you went to if you went to rec uh, if you went to load a formation, and some of the champions in that formation were off in another party. Uh, at that point, it would ask you if you wish to recall them, um, but it wouldn't load the formation. Um, in fact, uh, there was an additional bug attached to that, which is it would it would still load the familiars, which would cause which would cause the report that uh, your formation was filling with random champions, uh, because of course, if the familiars were on uh, the hero bar and they were leveling them up, all of a sudden you would just fill up with uh, with random champions. Um, so we did make some significant changes to that, uh, and what we've done is we've made it so that when you click to recall a champion it recalls that champion immediately. Um, and prior to this, it would actually try to catch up uh, where that champion would have left off in the background party. Um, what we've modified that to do now is actually, we're just going to uh, roll back that, uh, however many minutes are, are on that particular party, which is anywhere between zero and 10 for, for when you've got a background party doing that. Um, so this will result in instant recalls, but it may result in a, in a minor adjustment to the, uh, how far that party makes uh, depending on where you are in that 10-minute window. 
Um, and of course, when you click it, it will still ask you if you want to do that, and it will let you know that there may be a little bit of progress penalty to the party you're taking them from, because obviously you're taking them out of that party. Um, so that should be a significant improvement. Uh, again, it's going out with the build they're working on right now. Um, and uh, yeah, you can let us know how that all works for you once it's out. Um, sounds like there's also a couple more UI related issues around that fixed. And we're also working on getting the offline progression, the reason your offline progression stops listed in the welcome back dialog. So if you um, hit your wall, it'll tell you, you know, you got to this area and then you lost and you're knocked back. Um, as well as, uh, I can't remember the full list off the top of my head, but there's a handful of reasons that you'll see there and it'll let you know what happened. Um, so that should also make things uh, more uh, understandable. So, all right, going into questions uh, left over from uh, last week, or I guess two weeks ago's show. Mm -hmm. um, start with one here for you, Justin. And sure. the question is from uh, Thromby. Thromby asks, can you explain the new Kevmore blessing turn back time? It says time game pieces plus one over all campaigns. What does that plus one mean? P.S. Time game is how it's written in game. So uh, I checked with uh, Peter about this, and uh, I think uh, there's a couple of typos in there that have been fixed. Uh, but the general idea of that blessing, um, if we haven't made it 100% uh, clear in the text yet, is that um, when you earn one time gate piece uh, from a boss drop, you'll get a second time gate piece. So it's basically bosses drop two time gate pieces instead of one time gate piece. So you'll get uh, time gates a little bit faster with that blessing. Yeah, provided a, that boss does drop a time gate with piece, which is yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question here is one from Mr. Jake. I read. Read. Jake. Read. Wow. I put a space where it wasn't supposed to be. Um, <laughs> can we add a way to look at our usage of champion or the usage of our champion roster? I'd be curious how my usage shifts and encourage me to try some neglected champions. That's an interesting question. Um, I, I don't think we store enough data to really give you something that would be um, super useful in this way. Like we don't we don't store sort of historically which champions you've used on previous adventures and stuff like that. Um, just because we we don't have infinite <laughs> infinite space on our <laughs> servers, and uh, and that would probably use quite a bit of it very quickly. Um, it's it's kind of a cool idea. I think one thing one thing the only place we really show a kind of a champion um, popularity is when you go to open a time gate. You can sort by popularity, and you can look at some of the less popular ones in general. It's not specific to your account, but you can uh, you can see some of those. Some of those poor champions that nobody really uses and uh, and give them a shot in your formations i don't know do you have any thoughts on that dave i mean depending on the the granularity of it we could certainly track um how like just a time you know minutes in formation kind of thing and sort of mm. and that would give a, a i mean it's not it's, true. it's not a per use or per. like per adventure but it would be a, it'd certainly give you an idea of which champion you were using the most and which ones were uh, you know neglected <laughs> Poor neglected champions. <laughs> well, maybe they need a balance um, update. Maybe they do. <laughs> uh, here's a question here, or it's not actually a That's question. Not a question at it's all. from Door Doorbell Streams, who says, "I'm really happy about seeing my Tiamat blood vials and scales in my inventory. Thanks for that change." You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> um, we've got another question here from leftover from last week from Loser <laughs> Loser Seven Six Zero Six. I have a few friends who are new players that want to progress as fast as possible. As a new player myself, I have no clue what to suggest. Uh, do you have any tips or advice? Yeah, so my tips or advice for a new player is to go check out uh, our Discord. Um, our Discord server has lots of good guides, lots of good advice, and lots of people on there who are uh, super friendly and super willing to help you out and give you advice. Um, we've also got our Reddit forums. And uh, we've also got uh, the Steam forums are, are sometimes pretty active as well. So I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, guides and, and people who are willing to help out there in the community. Um, and I think that's, that's generally what we say when people ask this kind of question. Actually, it's funny, I just looking over at the chat, I see that uh, Doorbell Streams uh, is here today again, um, mm -hmm. noting that we got there, not a question. <laughs> um, OK. Oh, let's see. Um, yeah, here's another question uh, from Vurio Asp. 
uh, who asks, can we, ha can we not have champions in the upcoming event be offered in free time gates? No, do we? Is that not something we already do or try to do? Because I, I know we don't put them for sale, like we remove them yeah. from uh, the store. So I think this one is, um, <laughs> this is one we hit sometimes and don't hit sometimes. We do have uh, the ability to do this, but depending on when the champion data, the updated champion data gets pushed, um, sometimes it doesn't necessarily get in right away. Uh, I can talk to Peter about this because we should be able to do a bunch of this stuff uh, ahead of time. Um, but I could see potentially if we're kind of updating the champion um, event uh, or the champion data just before the event goes out, that it might not be updated the weekend before it goes out. So right. um, yeah, this is something we'll need to. So in general, we'll we try at. to do this, but yeah. it doesn't always happen. Yeah. We should have support for this. Yeah. It might've just not been updated for year five events. Okay. Um, yeah, and one more one more question from last <laughs> it's week. Not a, a um, little bit of a cheeky one here, actually. <laughs> uh, this is, well, yeah, cheeky on the fact that I stuck one. it in the list. Yes, yeah. very cheeky. Uh, from Norwolf uh, Siggy, who asks, uh, can you change the formation save to just remember where familiars are and have it use whatever familiars are available when you load the formation? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the updates from Mark this week. So yeah. yes, that should be out very soon. Yep. As soon as that's out, uh, that issue should be gone. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Um, yeah, let's move over to some of our new questions from this week. They're coming in very quickly. All <laughs> We've right. already got 30 here, so let's go. Upper question game. Let's go. Okay. First question is from Garwar. Snuck <laughs> one in. All right, <laughs> Justin, I could have sworn the overcapped item level adjustment was coming with the anniversary. Clearly, I was wrong. When should we expect it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, this is why I never promise anything, because <laughs> when I when I don't do it, then I get questions like this. Um, yeah, it's it's still something that's uh, that's on the list. Um, I can I can try and promote that to, to something that we can assign out to another developer, because clearly I keep promising it, and then I don't actually deliver on it. So I should really farm it out to someone who can <laughs> deliver on it. Um, yeah, so we will. I'll, I'll put bump that up to the top of the list, and we'll see. We'll see when we can get it assigned. Okay. Next question from mm -hmm. Make Five Four Three. This leaves me wanting a two one. Uh, they say hello. How are you? Are you going to fix the trial starting time drift soon? This should be a big priority in my opinion. Groups want to start new trials, and now it goes later and later every week. Soon it will be too late, and. Oh, I can't read that. Your your tags in the notice. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, causes days to be lost. Example: uh, six uh, six day, twenty hour week time would would be a quick fix. Yeah. So yeah, this is something that is um, fairly high on our list to fix. Um, we're we're trying to address sort of other bigger issues to make sure everything's kind of set up properly. Um, right now but it is um yeah the drift both the drift and um and making sure that uh, the trials at higher levels are sustainable are things that are on our list and so um we will we will definitely i mean yeah we will get to them uh when we get to them but they are high on our list this one's definitely very high on our list um here's a question um for you dave from hayden hayward uh, who says, any update on getting the Apple App Store to allow downloading the iOS version of Idle Champions on M1 Max? Uh, no, so I don't have an update on that. Actually, uh, honestly, that fell off my radar the moment the next question scrolled by last time. So I'm going to highlight this. I'll put it as uh, yellow and we take a look at it um, and, and see how, uh, how easy that is to do. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds like it should be straightforward, but uh, yeah, certainly <laughs> that one just... I, I forgot completely about that. Asked that question from last time. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Here we go, Justin. There's a question from JS in the J synth. No, it's JS like JavaScript in the. That's, uh. <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Uh, why are there no rogues in slot nine through twelve, but four in slot eight? Uh, so rogues don't like to be near the the top of the formation. So they, they avoid slots nine to, no. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is a good question. It goes to kind of how we decide what slots champions go into. Um, and it's a very complicated process. Um, every time a new event, you know, we, we're setting up a new event, we're trying to figure out what slot the new champion should be in. And there's a lot of, um, 
there's a lot of considerations to go into that. So there's considerations like what other champions are in this event and what slots are they in, what champions were in the previous event and the next slot or next event and what slots are they in. Um, if the champion is part of, um, say, a, a group like um, you know Heroes of Baldur's Gate or uh, or C Team or something like that, then we want to make sure that we're not overlapping those uh, champions in the same uh, bench slots. And so, uh, generally, when it comes down to it, there's maybe only three or four potential slots. And at that point, we start to look at things like. Um, gender balance, race balance, class balance, um, alignment balance, and role balance. And um, sometimes there's just no, there's no um, amazing <laughs> slot that works perfectly. Once in a while there is, I know we had one, one that we assigned um, just a couple of weeks ago and there was like one slot that was like, this is perfect, uh, but that rarely ever happens. So we have to make um, tough choices and sometimes it just ends up with multiple um, similar champions in one way or another in the same slot. So we've got slots where we've got, uh, I know there's one slot where it's like almost all chaotic good characters. And <laughs> uh, so we go, okay, let's try not to put another chaotic good character in this slot. But once in a while, uh, because there are no other slots available, it just happens again. So um, this is just a, uh, <laughs> a side effect of the fact that uh, there's a lot of decisions that go into what slots champions go into, and uh, and there's no there's no perfect way to sort them all, um, and so we just get some duplicates like this. Certainly something we try to avoid. There's also a lot of rogues, to be fair. There's so many rogues, <laughs> so many. Uh, let's see here. A, another question here. Uh, this one's from Feral Storm Two Hundred One for you, Dave. And they say, upon completion of trials, a favor conversion dialog immediately opens. If this occurs while the player is not available, it will immediately pause the game, stopping Modron advancement of the current party and rendering Modron animation unusable until the player interacts with the conversion dialog. Can this forced conversion be moved to a trigger when the player clicks Claim Rewards within the Trials Amount Tiamat screen? That is a good question. Just trying to process exactly what, um, how that process is working. So at the, when you complete the favor conversion. So when, yeah, when, uh, when, when trials out, ends, or when, when trial someone... ends, like the, when Tiamat's defeated or mm -hmm. when the clock runs out, we immediately pop up the favor conversion dialog. Um, and then of course that, if you're if that's during while well, you've got another run while you're on another instance or something with uh, with the Modron party, uh, it'll it'll freeze so that, that instance that essentially. That pauses it, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that has to have, have to be looked into a little more carefully. I'm not a hundred percent sure exactly how all the behavior there connects together. Um, I mean it's not going to um, stopping Modron advance from the current party and rendering. Well, the current party would be still on an adventure you couldn't repeat. Unless this is saying this is a favor conversion on the one in the background. Does that make sense to you, Justin? I I think it's just it's, it doesn't matter what party you're on, it just it'll it'll pause right. that. Because if you've I mean, got I, a, the, when you go to go to the part when you when you um, complete that, when it goes to update the next background party, it should still have the the correct amount of time to do on that background mm -hmm. instance. Um, but the current party would be uh, locked until you came like with and, and if it's the mode if it is the uh, trials party then it's not like you can keep going on that particular adventure right yeah yeah hmm. yeah it's i think i think we might have been a little bit overzealous with this um and i feel like probably the reason we were overzealous with it is um is uh because there are some issues with time gates where you can you can kind of cheekily um <laughs> uh, pull forward the favor in some ways so I think that uh, I think that this is this is probably something that we were just a little bit overzealous with, and it can probably. I know we were talking about um, the dev team was talking about potentially flagging um, stuff like the trials favor and the the time gate favor, and so um, so it would be we could sort of hold off on forcing you to convert it, but make sure that it gets converted before it causes a problem. So. Mm, so I'm just looking at sort of what people have been saying in the chat about this and mm -hmm. looks like it sounds to me like we're seeing that if you're in an active party, but that party isn't the one running the trials party. 
Yeah, so I mean, that's when it's yeah. going to cause a problem, yeah. right? It's right. it's not going to cause a problem if you're on the trial zone, because like you right. say, the trial zone can't sorry. do anything more. Yeah, sorry, I was just going to get my head wrapped around exactly how that becomes a problem. Yep, I can see yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's a good question. I know we talked about doing something where we, um, once that was complete, we created a record for the time for, for any favor conversion as if as, as an individual piece, and then that would have mm -hmm. to be then um, dealt with afterwards. Um, yeah. I know Peter, after going back and forth on it, seemed to think that was a potentially worthwhile doing for those, but um, it's a pretty significant change to the way that system works. So yeah, yeah, I feel I feel like we might have been just overzealous with this one because we were getting a little bit low on time when this <laughs> when this favor con forced favor conversion thing came up as a as a task. So. Yeah, well, we don't have a yeah. we don't have an immediate solution that can make that better. I don't think, except yeah, yeah, it's probably right, this requires some thought. Yeah. I will I will highlight this in yellow and we can talk to talk to the team about it. Okay. Uh, it looks like ah, giveaway will be starting soon. Giveaway will be starting soon, chat. So uh, pay attention in chat for that. Uh, I believe the giveaway this week is for uh, forty two chess of your choosing. Um, so make sure you check out chat, figure out what the keyword is that. Uh, that Martin posts in there, and then you can get yourself some chess potentially. Okay. Next question is from mm -hmm. Garwar, and Garwar is asking: Will you be adjusting Briv, Human, and/or Jim prior to raising the suspension wall? Um, also, what's the ETA on raising the suspension wall? <laughs> yeah. So we were talking about this before the stream, and um, yeah, we'll probably be raising the the soft cap uh, or the soft the band wall the essentially. Band wall. Um, pretty soon um, due to well, due to a bunch of stuff. Um, <clears throat> we probably won't be adjusting uh, Briv, Human, and Jim um, prior to it just because of how the timing works out. But, uh, but Briv, Human, and Jim are all, all on our minds in terms of, uh, <laughs> in terms of, of stuff like, uh, yeah, getting, getting to areas higher than you really um, can normally get through clever use of mechanics. So that is uh, that is something we're still looking at. It's not we're not tying that to uh, to a soft cap increase though. So. Okay. Next question here is also mm -hmm. from Feral Storm two hundred one, mm -hmm. and uh, Feral Storm asks: Within the trials of Tiamat, formation restrictive possibilities include you can have a max of four alignment champions in your formation at a time. Uh, the neutral tag, when given to a player, behaves differently than either good or evil. In the neutral, triggers on both the, the law, chaos, neutral axis, as well as the um, good, uh, neutral, evil axis. Mm -hmm. This double axis interaction makes the neutral restriction more difficult than the other two as it restricts the player's uh, bench further or further. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so this is a good question. Uh, there's a couple of kind of things to, to, uh, to talk about on this. Um, <clears throat> one is that um, yes, there are there are definitely some restrictions that are harder than others, and it's uh, I, I don't mind so much that the neutral one is harder than the good, evil, uh, chaotic, or um, lawful ones. Um, it, it is a little bit harder, but it's also uh, it's not as as harder as it seems like it might be because there's not an even distribution like we talked about earlier there's not an even distribution of alignments across the board we have a heck of a lot more uh, chaotic good and uh, and lawful evil and and whatnot champions than we do neutral so uh, if you have to actually look at the number of champions that are locked out by the neutral restriction and you look out the number of champions that are locked out by the good restriction or the chaotic restriction it's actually not that far off so um, it's not as bad as it seems like it might be. Um, and it is, um, and I, I'm fine if it is a little bit harder than the other ones because uh, there are definitely some restrictions that are harder and there are some restrictions that are easier. Um, you know, for example, this week I had the restriction, I had one of the restrictions I had was the, the um, stuff falls from the sky and deals damage to your champions every 10 seconds. And that one's actually quite hard because it makes uh, health potions actually kind of not a good idea to use health potions and, and tanks um, because if you increase your health it doesn't increase your healing and your guys just die much faster so 
there's definitely some that are harder than others and we're okay with that and then the other thing i just want to touch on with the neutral thing is that it's actually it's it's because of the way that we store alignments on uh, on champions we store basically each tag kind of separately so they'll have like a if someone's chaotic good they'll have a chaotic tag and a good tag and if someone's neutral um uh, lawful neutral they'll have a lawful tag and a neutral tag and if someone's just neutral they'll have just a neutral tag and so it's actually a little bit more complicated to actually um, to restrict it on the the good neutral evil axis or the uh, lawful uh, neutral chaotic axis um, specifically so oftentimes when we do the neutral thing it, it behaves on both axes unless it is otherwise specified specifically specified Okay. Now that I was, was my long answer. Just going through question. here, marking off some more items. So I don't know if you mm -hmm. mentioned in there is, maybe I missed it, but I think the other side of the neutral is that when it's a positive thing, you get double the champions. That is true. So, I mean, it cuts both ways. It does. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, do you want me to give, or I'll, let's, yeah, I'll down scroll here. down and get you a question I know you want to skip this next one here. <laughs> You're waiting on this oh, one. Oh, no, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that one yeah, there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here's a question from Cran Runch who asks, why is the refresh button grayed out for the I Trials Mount team match? I know I highlighted it for you. I don't actually this know. Will be, this is in the lobby. Is um, this just a timer-based thing? Well, I, I don't have the answer know. for this, Justin. Okay. <laughs> well, then I have the answer for it. Uh, so the, <clears throat> the it's to refresh the, the available trials when you go to join a campaign. And it's, it's grayed out because we don't want you hurting our poor servers. Uh, <laughs> we don't want people spamming because the actually getting the the trials that are available and whatnot is um, it uh, it's a little bit more um, intensive than normal server calls and so we don't want players to be spamming that so that's why well it does ar it arguably does, it's not more intensive but it is going to a central location rather than spread out across um, it, it could all the potentially players, yes so. it is more it has more potential to cause problems than normal calls. Um, it does, I think it, it should um, ungray out after about 60 seconds, but if you close the dialog and reload it and whatnot, it'll, um, it'll make a refresh call itself and, uh, and whatnot. So. Right. so it's gray because it has recently been refreshed. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm jumping uh, back up to the question oh, of sure. the day because, sure. I mean, the question Let's here it. is from uh, Billy G 2000 and they're asking the question that a lot of people have been asking, um, and that is, why was the trials given such an absurd jump in level requirements? The majority of the player base will struggle at level six. Anything higher is almost out of reach for most, almost all of the player base. Uh, yeah, great question. That's all the time we have. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, knew this question was coming. Um, so yeah, a couple of things here, just for people who aren't aware, I guess in trials, um, one of the one of the systems in it is that you get an adventure every day. Uh, if you complete that adventure to a certain area, you get a, a certain amount of a bonus or of DPS that is applied against Tiamat, and that is um, and that is very helpful and and somewhat required in beating the trials, um, especially if you, your DPS isn't very high. So with each difficulty. Um, the previous behavior uh, that was not the intended behavior was um, was that the uh, those level requirements did not go up, nor did the rewards from them. So even if you were in difficulty uh, five or six, um, it would still be beat area 100 to get 110 um, DPS. So that's that's not how it was intended to be. Um, the original uh, design was that is each difficulty goes up so too does the level requirement and the amount of DPS you get out of that. So it was intended that um, rather than your personal DPS being the thing that kind of limits um, whether or not you can defeat Tiamat, it was um, whether or not you can beat the adventures each day that, uh, that sort of controls whether or not you can beat Tiamat. So um, there was a bug in the, uh, in the in the code that determined um, what the level requirements and the bonuses were going to be, it was like uh, it was like there was a missing S or something, so it was looking for difficulty IDs instead of difficulty ID or something like that, or difficulty instead of difficulty ID, and, and so it wasn't reading those in. And somehow, unfortunately, very unfortunately, this got missed during testing, 
Um, I guess a bunch of our testers didn't realize it was supposed to be the case <laughs> um, because it didn't, uh, we didn't put together the fact, and I don't think it even ended up in the FAQ um, until after launch. And, uh, and I, uh, we just didn't notice it internally until um, after launch, until last week. So, um, yeah, so the, I guess. Which is <laughs> <laughs> you never told us. <laughs> That's true, we never told you. We just said kind of go for it and, uh, and, and figure it out. So I'm not blaming, I'm not, to be fair, I'm not blaming our testers. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm really just blaming myself. Um, I, I was the one who should have noticed this and I just didn't, so my bad. Um, one thing I will say is that I, I think the, because of the way it was rolled out uh, without that difficulty uh, bump in place, I think it led to some, um, some incorrect assumptions, some misunderstandings about um, sort of what we intended for players to be able to do with trials. So I think players kind of came out and thought um, were, that they should be able to get to the top difficulty and then sort of just easily sort of burn through the top difficulty. And really the intention was is that most players should get to a certain difficulty and then struggle to get beyond it. So for brand new players, that might be difficulty two or three. Um, for more hardcore players, that might be difficulty five or six. For the, the very, very top end players, that might be difficulty seven or eight. Um, the difficulties sort of nine and 10, the top two, um, weren't really intended to be within reach of players at this point. Um, probably down the road as we add more and more ways to get power as we as we you know every every year we add sort of more systems that give more and more power we do soft cap increases we add champions that might be slightly more powerful so those top difficulties were kind of intended to be stretch goals that uh, that we can sort of add power towards as we go not necessarily intended to be ones that players were beating you know 10 weeks out of the the launch of the system more like you know a year out from the launch of the system kind of thing so um, so that's sort of where those systems are at. And, uh, and I guess the other thing to just address is why did we, why did we do the, the, the fix essentially um, so abruptly? And the reason for that is we wanted to, um, we wanted to make sure that we got the proper balancing in front of players as quickly as possible because um, a lot of the theory crafting and a lot of the, the discussion about the system were based off of um, essentially incomplete data. And so we wanted to make sure that everyone had the proper data in front of them and, uh, and were able to start to evaluate the system given the, what we intended it to be. Uh, and so it was important for us to kind of get that out sooner rather than later. Um, I know some players are saying, well, you should do some of that at the same time as you do some of the buffs, like um, shortening the cooldown and um, doing stuff with the um, currency you use to start um, adventures. But uh, we really just wanted to make sure that fix was out so we could start to, um, so the players could start to, to understand our intentions for it um, as soon as possible. We didn't want to wait another couple of weeks and then do it. So yeah, that's kind of the the super long answer to that question. Um, hopefully that makes sense to people. Uh, and if not, we will, uh, we are super willing to answer other questions along the same lines. Okay. As long as the, if not, is we don't have to listen to your reenactment of last week's stream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we got a really easy question here that I've highlighted mm -hmm. to follow that one, um, which I'm just going to read that? and I'm going to answer. And oh, that okay. is, uh, from Joe Mallow and Joe oh, Mallow yes, asks, how is it determined who gets the tutorial variant? And who doesn't? Um, and so, uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, <laughs> there's actually, depending on um, which uh, AB group you end up in uh, when you, you join the game, um, we had been doing some testing on the tutorial. And in the tutorial, uh, there's actually one where you do a second version of the tutorial, um, which has, is that the one with the wagon? They both have a wagon? It's the one with the wagon, right? Yes, the tutorial yes. variant, there's a wagon. There's, and and if you just get bumped into the main game um, without having to do the one with the wagon. Um, and the reason we did that is actually because we were wondering if, if you're new to the game and you come back and you see the, the you've done the first adventure and now you're doing exactly the same adventure again, um, some players can look at that and think, maybe like what happened my game reset they don't notice there's a big difference between it and they might get the idea that the game is is literally just sort of this repeating of of, of the same adventure um, which is not the idea that we want to get across there mm -hmm. um 
anyway, uh, so we have those two versions. Um, I don't actually remember how that shook out uh, in terms of because I think we did eventually turn it. Or did we, we did turn I, that off? Or did I, we ever turn I that off? I thought that we had we turned that off and that everybody skipped the tutorial variant. Yeah. I I was pretty sure that we have done that at this point um, because I think the data sort of panned out that um, that people were a lot more happy when they uh, yeah well, it's more <laughs> when exciting they didn't have to do the variant and they could just get right into some of the the cooler adventures. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, but to go back to the question, which was how is it determined? Uh, this was literally just um, a, a group split on whether your uh, user ID when you joined the game was odd or even. So <laughs> there we go. So there you can get some insight into if you don't know your, your user ID, your internal user ID, you can, you <laughs> you know can know whether or not you've done the variant. I didn't say which one was which though, so. That's true. Okay. That's you will know it's either odd or even. Yep. So that helps narrow yeah. it down. <laughs> It's not zero. Okay. Um, <laughs> back to a more serious question. Uh, we got a question <laughs> here from Garwar. Uh, and Garwar asks, in trials, how does the scaling work for earning scales when it says zero to 4,000? Uh, also, how does the scaling work for earning chests when it says two to four? Sure. So um, I'll do the second one uh, first, because that one's easier. So the, the two to four is basically when you defeat Tiamat, you will get uh, either two, three, or four, and it's an even choice or even chance to get um, one of those options. Um, so there's nothing there's nothing external that kind of influences that. Whereas with the scales, um, if you end the week and you have not defeated Tiamat, you will get a portion of the reward uh, based on how much of Tiamat's health you have taken off. So if you get Tiamat to to one percent health and then the weekends, um, you've got a pretty large chunk of that. If you get Tiamat to only to 90% health um, and then end the week, you'll get a not very large chunk of that. So it's, uh, and I believe it's a linear between sort of 100% um, and 0% health on, on Tiamat. Um, but there is a bonus when you do defeat Tiamat. So it's, if you were to get her to 99%, uh, or if you were to get her to 1% health, um, you're not going to get 99% of the scales. You'll get um, a, a smaller percentage, but uh, it'll still be pretty big. Okay. Let's see. Um, here's an interesting question. Um, oh, how am I going to answer that? Yeah, I'll ask this to you, Dave. Uh -huh. Let's see. <laughs> so this is from Fatherwind, um, who asks, with the epic um, Apple court ruling, does that mean that crossplay has a better chance? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think in general, um, the answer is I, I wouldn't see it having much of a better chance because we have so many platforms and all the platforms still have the same kind of general requirement, which is that they don't want their users to um, be siphoned off to other platforms. Um, and so they're all pretty, uh, they, they, they hold their users pretty close to their chests and, uh, and they, yeah, they, they don't want to allow any kind of um, account linking item or account crossplay stuff because uh, for them it's it's sort of their bread and butter um, now for some of the bigger platforms you know epic and apple and steam and google i mean they're they're less concerned about that than some of the smaller ones like you know congregate and armor games and um and also it depends on sort of their their corporate their company culture around the way they do that you know i think i think nintendo is also um, you know and sony they want to make sure that their players are their players and you don't go off to play on you know xbox um so um so I don't think that makes a big difference there um, between Epic and Apple, although certainly uh, you know, we continue to keep an eye on, on what's happening with that um, just because it's interesting. But um, but yeah, like I say, I, um, we're, we're across so many platforms and all of them um, really do like to uh, to keep their ecosystems their ecosystems. So. All right. We have another question here for you, Justin, from okay, the okay. Sifu. Uh, mm -hmm. Every new day in trials is like attempting a harder variant in an event. However, there's no easy way to acquire additional favor after the first few days. This has created a situation for our trials group where one member had to deal with an uh, IRL issues for a few days and when they came back could not complete a deep run because the added difficulty thereby, thereby contributing virtually no DPS. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. um, would you consider adding a free play option so that players can catch up with their team? So, um i don't i don't think this is correct <laughs> um i i'm pretty sure you can run like you you can run the harder adventure and 
go, you know, to say it requires you to get to area 400 or something, you can go to area 200 and reset and you'll get favor. There's nothing that stops you from getting favor if you don't um, complete the adventure. So it kind of, um, the adventures are all kind of like free play. Um, now, if I'm wrong about that and you don't actually get favor if you don't complete the objective, then that is 100% a bug. Um, you should you should definitely get favor even if you don't complete the adventure. So, uh, let's see. I'm seeing some stuff here. We still have multiple multiple variants. I'm just trying to read the thing here. <laughs> It's that you can't push under multiple restrictions. That is true that you can't push to get your damage up. I see. I see what you guys are saying. So you can you you can't get as far as you could have gotten on day one. Uh, and so you're asking basically to have a version of the adventure with the with the restrictions in place and a version in of the adventure with just the day one restriction in place. Hmm. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a good point. Like day one is definitely a very powerful day for getting um, getting the restriction or getting your your personal DPS number up. I think the thing that players will find as you get into harder difficulties, um, especially with the the proper balance in place, is that a lot of your damage will come from um, just doing the daily adventures and not necessarily your daily or your your total DPS. Um, like for example, even in difficulty like three or four, you're going to be getting um, you know four or five hundred um, uh, assault party DPS just from completing just for completing the um, the daily quest. Whereas you know your average um, sort of damage over time might only be, or your your total damage through the adventure might only be in the E to two hundred or two fifty or so, and so you'll get more assault party damage from just completing the adventures than you will from pushing super duper hard and super duper far. So I think that this might, especially with the changes that came out last week, might not be as huge of an issue. As long as you can grind enough to complete the adventure, um, I think that uh, I think that you'll still be able to contribute quite a bit to the uh, to trials. I don't think it'll be something that prevents you from being able to contribute and complete the adventure, complete um, uh, defeat Tiamat. See, I, I see what you guys are saying, and I and I, I can definitely see how it's it's more challenging. Um, I don't necessarily, yeah, and this this we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. Um, it's not it's not something that super jumps out as me out at me as being like a very uh, a very like a showstopper thing. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, let's uh appreciate I appreciate you guys bringing that up though. It's it's definitely something to think about, but uh yeah. Okay. Uh next question uh, here yeah. for you Justin is from Aquatic mm -hmm. Demon 1. Mm -hmm. And Aquatic Demon would like to know, are older champions like Delina and other meme champions uh, <laughs> getting any rework to make them un unpopular? Uh, yeah, this is a good question as well. Um, so one of, the, um, one of the things that we've been talking about for a long time, I know we posted it in the dev blog uh, last, um, uh, last year, and then got called out on it, I think, last episode or the episode before, um, is we keep on promising that we're going to go back and do more um, balance updates to older champions. And uh, and then we keep on not doing that. So one of the reasons that we haven't been doing that as much is just it, it falls pretty much on me to do all of, um, all of those balance updates uh, or do the design for them at least. It falls on the dev team to actually implement my crazy stuff, but falls on me to do the designs for those, and I just haven't had uh, time for it this year. Um, so we are actually, I think we're, we're our new our new designer is starting next week, and so hopefully that'll free up both some of my time, and they'll be full time, and we can start to get to some of these things because I would definitely like to go back and take another stab at some of these champions. Um, we are doing a little bit of, um, of balance updates to some champions very soon. Um, there are some, some updates coming, um, I think, 
what day is it today? Thursday? Tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> there should be a couple of small uh, things coming, and then over the next couple of months, we might see some other updates um, to certain champions that may or may not appear in certain things. Uh, I can't really say any more, or else the marketing team is going to shoot me in the. <laughs> oh, whoa, <laughs> just whoa. Be like, All right. <laughs> the stream will end immediately. There'll be this red dot on my forehead, and then over. Um, so, yes. Keep your eyes peeled for that stuff. Coming soon. Okay. Um, let's see here. Here's some. I, I found some questions. Yep, there's some blue ones that are highlighted go. in blue. Let's do it. Okay, Dave, you get to talk for the next 15 minutes. Uh, here's talk a question. Because really so you know, we got <laughs> no. we got uh, yeah 10 minutes to go. Here's a question from Tarata who says, um, uh, "What do they actually say?" The last one now. Have the game in window mode, open file explorer window, or any other program overlapping the window, and the info bleeds over. What does this mean? Yeah, it's a good question. I'm, I'm not 100% sure um, exactly the behavior that they're describing there, but I do know that um, most events do, like they do, they, they bleed ah. through for sure. Um, and it is one of those things where it's certainly the highlighting on the non-active window does happen. And it's something that happens in other programs as well. Um, and we tested this and we have like a browser window and you move your mouse over top of the window that's not active and it's still highlighted elements in it. Mm. Um, I don't think this is a problem, so. Um, I don't think we need to worry about it unless there's something specific I'm missing here. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. But I could be wrong. Uh, yeah, I've definitely info, noticed that. And it's uh, yeah, it always <laughs> up here. Info on characters, info on characters. Yeah, it Isn't always, it? I think it always, it's a little bit jarring to be like, why is this window underneath here updating? Well, I don't have it, you know, in the forefront. But like you say, I don't think it causes any, you know, it, the clicks, like actual clicks, don't go through, so you can't accidentally like mess up your formation when you're like browsing a website on top of the game or stuff like that. Yeah, but so, the most position does hover through. Yeah, um, sounds like they mentioned they, like they say info on characters in the chat, and I'm yeah. So it sounds like it would be a hover. Um, anyway, um, if it's not, you can follow up. Yeah. All right. Next uh, question. Yeah. Next question. Here's one from Kvarn86, uh, and they ask: Are there plans to optimize the game on Switch? Because the game gets laggy when the game is running for a while. After you reboot it again, it works fine for a while. Um, yeah. So this is a, a, a the, the game on Switch does run um, a lot less performant than I would like it to. Uh, we did spend a significant, I mean, a significant period of time before we launched on Switch, actually. Before and then also after, um, mm -hmm. including some full rewrites to how the animation systems worked to attempt to improve that. And and it, they did improve a bunch of that. Um, the Switch one was an odd uh, platform for us compared to the other platforms because uh, Switch tends to actually has, uh, compared to say like an, an iPad, um, where Apple was always quite stingy with their memory, but has an excellent CPU. Uh, the Switch actually has a much, much uh, weaker CPU, but all lots of memory. And so we sort of had to do a remote face on the way we optimize things, um, which was uh, you know putting more things into memory and, and having less uh, less CPU usage. Whereas certainly on the, we'd, ha we'd had the opposite optimization problem uh, prior, which was that uh, given that there was almost no memory available on older iPads, uh, that it would run into the wall and, and then to get terminated. Um, but rambling aside, uh, we don't have any plans at the, at the moment to to spend time on that. Um, it's I, I know it's a problem. I know the performance there is not as, as uh, high as we would like it to be. Um, and of course, the behavior of seeing if you close it and, and start again, that, that it runs better means that there's definitely something building up there. Um, but uh, we don't have plans at the moment to, to dedicate time on that. But um, it would be something that I'd like to see done um, if, if it can be done. Like if we can if we can dedicate some time to making it run better, that would be great. Um, but it's not a, a top priority item right now uh, for Switch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question here is from uh, Mephisti75, who asks, have you thought about using the Modron core to record a session so instead of computing the outcome, it would replay the session with a positive negative variable on rewards for each instance of the recording? Cheers. Yeah, so I highlighted this because I thought this was actually an interesting question um, because part of this is actually how we do it. Um, so when you're uh, doing a Modron core and you get multiple resets, um, the first time it processes through, it takes your you know your formation and everything set up and figures out how 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 long it takes to progress through that amount of, of content until you get to that that 
point at which you've said, okay, reset at this area. And then it takes that and it goes through and it divides the time out by that saying, okay, this will probably take you this amount of time to do each one of those runs. And then at each one, it adds in the additional favor that you would have so that you get additional gold for each run so that you don't end up uh, coming up short for that. Um, so, so yeah, so that's how that actually works. Uh, the issue, unfortunately, with sort of saving that and then using it later is that any variation to your formation or any additional, uh, you know, equipment or anything you've added to that um, would, uh, I mean, equipment maybe not so much, but formation variations um, would definitely throw a wrench into that. Um, so instead of saving that, we just recalculate it for the first run, and then from the first run forward, it gets it gets reused. So, um, so yeah, so that's done. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Next question we have here is for you, Justin. Uh, mm. It is from Rajuvi. Rajuvi. Oh, that's what I'm going with. Um, will there be a way for conditional formation buffs like Bailoff stacks to be saved if the game slash client restarts? I play on iOS and oh, well, this is timely, huh? From my <laughs> um, I play on iOS and crashing is frequent, so I can't take advantage of uh, the Jin stacks because they disappear after a restart? Yeah, so um, I appreciate you putting this question in, uh, Rajivi, because um, stacks that are more, that are supposed to be sort of permanent until the adventure restarts should be something that are saved um, and, and should persist between client restarts. So the fact that uh, Jin stacks are not um, doing that, that is, um, that's actually probably a bug and I'm going to highlight that one and give that to whoever implemented um, Bayloth to get fixed. Because anything that anything that persists, like I said, until the adventure ends should be saving. Um, things that we don't sort of care about saving are things that are more temporal. So maybe a buff that lasts for 60 seconds or 30 seconds or something like that. Um, but the, the Jin ones should definitely be saving uh, between client restarts or client <laughs> crashes and restarts. Um, and then I actually see in chat here, there's some people talking a little bit more about sort of the slowdown and, and crashing over time that we were talking about with the switch there. And uh, I, I would say that it's very possible that there is something um, something in the game that is uh, that's uh, slightly um, slightly Leaky. leaking leaking a little bit. Um, it happens from time to time, which is the pace at which we add new champions um, and add new um, new features and stuff that just from time to time a, uh, a memory leak will sneak through so uh, every so often we go through and run some uh, run some memory management tools on there and um, we're usually able to track down the more egregious of the memory leaks but I'm not sure if we've done that recently uh, yeah I mean I had one running um, you know I never I actually I ran into some what am I trying to say I did have one running a few weeks ago um, unfortunately, I didn't end up with any good results from it. Um, right. And then I ended up having the, the actual um, dumps from it uh, getting corrupted, which was... <laughs> the, the memory dumps and, got yeah. too big. And, and unfortunately, sort of that, sort of, that, that sort of thing takes several days to do, um, and I didn't mm -hmm. have time to run it again. Um, but yeah, we, we started up with a formation we think might be suspect, and then uh, set the speed on the client to uh, um, something like 10 times, and then we let it run. Um, <laughs> and well, it's recording the uh, the memory, the objects that are in use. And after about a, you know ten hours, we make a snapshot of that. And after another ten hours, we make another snapshot. And if we can do that, um, and then we can compare them, we can see what's building up when it shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Often, it ends up being something that's been added in a new champion, um, an effect or, or an ability from that champion that uh, is leaving some some tiny thing behind um, that just isn't noticeable until it's uh, been run ten thousand times, and then it. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I will say one thing that is helpful for tracking these down is um, if you guys experience this consistently, um, if you just open a ticket and let us know kind of what formation you're using um, in general that uh, when this happens, that can help us track down maybe specifically which champions are uh, are potentially leaking. Yeah, and in that in that particular instance, it's best if you have that formation active and then mm -hmm. you open the ticket. Uh, the ticket yeah. system will record that and give it to us. So, yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah. Here's a question. Um, where are we at for time? We're, we're we still got a couple more. A little bit. Uh, so here's a question from Dirty Toes B, who says, uh, "How many years do you envision this game going? Do I have year ten events to look forward to?" Um, quite possibly. Yeah. 
I yeah, mean, definitely. I mean, <laughs> we we kind of I think we've gotten this question a couple of times, and I think generally our answer is like we will keep making the game as long as players are playing it and enjoying it and uh, and having fun because it's fun for us to make. So, yeah. Okay. Well, we got a because we're limited on time here. I don't know if we got a few that are, are quick or that. Uh, I'll just sort of bang through them in order here. Okay. Uh, we're we're trying we're we're skipping a bunch here. Just uh, FYI, uh, <laughs> fans in chat there, because on previous weeks we've kind of gotten we've kind of done like the first twenty or thirty questions, and everyone who asks a question after about the first ten minutes just gets well doesn't get their question answered. So we're trying to skip down and and find interesting questions um, that we don't answer very often further down, and just let people who um, who maybe don't, don't join right away or don't ask their questions right away a chance to have their question answered. So if we missed your question and you asked it earlier on, um, we might we might get to it uh, in next week's episode. Anyway, um, here's a question for you, uh, Dave. It says uh, from Gamer Cabot, and they say, when loading a formation in a variant that contains one or more NPCs taking up formation spots, the game shuffles the save champions around when hitting an unavailable space in the formation instead of just not loading the ones that are saved in the taken spots. Could this be looked at? So when I saw this, oh, I'm just on the mic. Uh, when I saw this initially, I actually kind of wondered if this is, if, if what you're observing here is actually the issue that Mark uh, has now corrected with the loading of the champions from the, who are out, um, who are in other, other, uh, other parties. Um, because what what was actually so it was reported as if random champions were being put into those slots. However, what was happening was it was not loading that current formation, but it was still loading the familiars, and the familiars, which were then loaded across the hero bar, um, <laughs> immediately started leveling up and unlocking heroes, which would then immediately fill the formation with a bunch of random champions. And so, um, I. I, this sounds like that's what's happening there. That unless there's mm -hmm. another bug uh, in there, but this this is the the observation. This is what you would see um, if you didn't realize what was happening was those familiars are getting loaded in and causing all that to uh, all the, the heroes to to suddenly be unlocked. So yeah. I think that's what's happening, and it may very well be fixed in a version that, as far as I know, they may have pushed up. Although we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, that is uh, that's that's I'm I'm pretty sure you're right about that because I know that if you had a formation that's not full. Um, that would mean there's empty slots in the formation save, and it's not like that messes up, like it puts them into the specific assigned slots. And so I can't see, I can't see why it would uh, we be skipping over and then just loading them, like skipping that and then loading on. So I think that sounds like a really smart uh, insight into that. Okay, and I see uh, in the chat there, Gamer Cabot saying that it's similar but not the same. So we can take a look and, yeah. and see if NPCs are doing that, but. Um, if there are familiars loaded in there, that, that could be the issue. Um, but I'll tag it, and we'll look at it uh, just mm -hmm. to be sure. Cool. Um, let's see here. Uh, here's a question from Grey Dawn Boy, um, who says, I currently play on Steam and Epic. And I just noticed that Epic doesn't appear to have a skip button on adventure completion. Steam does. Has this always been the case? Is this a bug, or have I goofed up my settings somehow? <laughs> so you know, I saw this as it came through the chat earlier, and I think, and I think some players were saying that they did have it. Um, it's entirely possible that this was tagged on a, like a, a version, like a game version for some reason, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure why it would have been because we would definitely want to have it have it there on, on all the platforms. Um, yeah, I'm very surprised by that. Yeah. We'd, ha um, we'd have to go out of our way to actually have it not appear on one platform versus another. So, yeah, very strange. Okay, well, I think we're basically out of time here. Oh, um, okay. Well, yeah. let me scroll so, down to the bottom here. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, if we didn't get to your question, like we said, don't worry, uh, you'll have another opportunity. We will be live again at this same time next week. Let me just double check. Yes, we will be <laughs> live at this same time next week. Uh, before we sign off, uh, though, we'd like to thank our tireless mods who copy your questions into our question stock and generally make things awesome and easy for us. And today it was Martin. So thank you, Martin. Yes, and of course, thanks to all of you for hanging out, watching the stream, and enjoying the game. Because without you, we none of us here would get to do what we do. Yeah, we'd have to do something else. But it changed that line. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. Bye, everyone. We didn't write a hot mic joke. Nope.